First of all, um, uh, I'd like to say my prayers and thinking about Mike Bobo. Uh, we've texted back and forth, and uh, so uh, I sure hope he's doing well. And uh, so we, we were texting back and forth real early in the mornings, um, just checking on him. He's a great man, a great coach. Um, we have a lot in common. He's a coach's son like me, and uh, he's uh, uh, just think the world of him and hope he, everything recovers covers well. And, they figure out exactly what's going on with him. So my prayers go out to him, there's no doubt. And I have been praying for him, there's no doubt whatsoever. So um, today was a good practice. Um, it really was a good practice. I thought this might have been one of our best practices. And uh, the energy was there. Um, and we're running around in the heat, which was good. Um, and I, I thought that overall, both sides um, did really well. I think we made some, I think we made a big step today uh, with some things I was looking for him to do. Mike, when you hit that 12th practice in camp, a lot of times that's when camp legs set in and people right. are getting tired is that is that was that very promising uh, no. to see this yeah, happen yeah today, it then? was today i was thinking about it plus it's wednesday you've already had two good practice two hard practices we were in full pads yesterday we went in shells today we're still going to be physical um so i was excited to see the energy and um, the effort and the intensity out there is there a point in camp when you want some of those position battles settled or are there some of them that could go pretty close to the opening um, you definitely want them settled but you definitely want competition you know so um, but I think some of them are starting to work their way out, and we'll, we'll know a little bit more after Friday night uh, exactly on that. You, you mentioned on these hot days how much yeah. you like the heat and yeah. everything. When you see like situations with what's happened in Maryland, yep. does it make you more cognizant of this stuff? Make you kind of review everything and say, okay, let's make sure we're yeah, doing Yeah, we right review right. everything. We have multiple water breaks uh, in between every time they, they have water. We have trainers all over the place with water all the time. And the kids also, we've told them. If they're overheating, if they're too, they, they can step out. And the trainers, we're watching that all the time. Um, so we're very cognizant of that. Um, and we're in really good shape, too. We're in really good shape. So um, that helps um, tremendously on that. But you always, you're always concerned about that. Um, and w when we do any workouts, do anything, we always have our trainers there, our, our strength coaches. We, we collaborate all the time talking about different things. Uh, you know, and any of our kids, that, we have a couple kids that have sickle cell. So we have to watch them, and they're able to pull themselves out at all times. So, uh, you know, that's something that we're really on top of. How much of that kind of stuff has changed in the course of your coaching career, uh, just how cognizant programs are about? Right. Well, um, I, well everywhere I played and coached, um, the coaches have always been um, pretty cognizant of what's going on. They pushed us, but we had the trainers out there. They knew what was going on. Um, uh, so... In the situations and the coaches I've coached with, I've, I've never, you know, had it where I thought it was over the top or anything like that. And uh, in any situation I've been involved in, but that's something you have to be uh, aware of all the time, and uh, uh, and, and understand completely. Uh, you know, everybody has to push themselves. Everybody has trainers, right? When you go work out, oh, that's why there's a big CrossFit craze and all the individual training because you push yourself harder. When you worked out by yourself, you wouldn't push yourself as hard. So the trainer's there to help push you, but they have to be very cognizant of what's going on and understand everything. Well, and our trainers do a great job, and our strength coaches do a great job of that. Chase Frankie's been kind of a Swiss Army knife on the D-line for you. Is he still floating around, or does he have more of a set role now? No, he's going to kind of be a Swiss Army knife, because that, that's good. He can play nose guard and end, but he, he is uh, he's played really well at end. Uh, you know, he won an uncommon jersey one day in practice, and his effort and the way he's played. And, He's a good pass rusher too. So in our nickel situations, I've been really pleased with uh, Jason uh, and his ability. His ability to move around is a, is, a, is, a, is a good thing for him and a good thing for us. Drew Lewis mentioned recently that this year he really wants to uh, make sure he's not relying on Rick so much yeah. uh, with his knowledge of the defense. How do you feel like Drew's, Drew's doing in that regard? I think he's doing real well. Um, you know, he's he understands the defense. Uh, Coach um, Ells has done a good job with him. Coach Elliott's doing a good job with him. You know, he's kind of moving back at both those spots, um, which is good because he understands it. And I think it, I think it even helps him understand more, um, you know, where his help is. But he, he's doing an excellent job of that. And I have noticed a lot less of Rick talking to him and him them talking to each other. There's a difference in getting talked to. Like my wife talks to me, sometimes I'm not able to talk back. Um, but uh, um, they, they do a good job, and he is communicating a lot better. People talk about a pass rush. They, they notice the guy that gets the quarterback sack, but a lot of the times it's also your defensive line that's just pushing the pocket. Are you getting more of a push up there, you think, this year? Yeah, you want to kind of get the guy off his spot sometimes. Uh, I, I sure hope so. We'll find out when we get to the games. 
I do feel like we're a little more athletic, a little stronger up there. We've got some, some more length in there, um, which is good and helps us with pushing the pocket. You know, a lot of times you can push the pocket, but if you're too short and your hands aren't really in the way, um, it doesn't help as much. So I, I like the length of uh, a couple of our guys that are in there doing a good job. How much will Will Sherman's versatility help you guys playing guard and tackle? Uh, it's an excellent question. We uh, really like Will at tackle and guard. Um, right now, his skill set with weight is a little bit more suited for tackle. Okay, because the guard you know, in there, you get a little bit bigger. But he is gaining weight. He's like 275 now. So, um, but we, he will, he can't play. The, the other good thing is, is when he pulls at guard, he really can move. So they're kind of give and take in there with guard. And at tackle, he's doing an excellent job at tackle. So, yes, he has the ability to play both. We're kind of seeing him at tackle right now, but there's no doubt he can go in and play guard. We'd like him to be a little bit bigger. Um, but when he, his added advantage on that is when we pull the guards, as we do quite a bit, he's excellent at that. With Alex Skinny, I know you talked about him quite a bit at Media Day. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, obviously, the respect he commands from his teammate being voted captain. If you had a punter or kicker over the years as a coach uh, that maybe commanded similar respect from their teammates, or is he pretty unique in that regard? Uh, I, we've had a lot of good punters and kickers come through here that were good leaders, uh, and also when I was at um, uh, San Jose State. But I, I believe that uh, he's been here for four years, been the starter for four years, and they've seen how hard he works. They see how hard he works in the weight room. He's, he's kind of one of the guys, so sometimes kickers are kind of get isolated just because of the position, but they, they all like him, they know who he is, they, they respect what he does, um, they know how hard he works. Um, so I think that him getting elected captain is just a credit. It's, not, it's a credit to what he's done on the field, but I think it's a huge credit to what he does off the field. And his work ethic and his attitude and the way he handles himself away from here and different things, um, I think makes a huge impact. Which, uh, the coaches don't always know all those things, but it's good the way we vote for captains. I hope that they hit that right on the head. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, all right, Mike thank you, guys. Thanks.